Hey everybody! So today, Kaylee has been working really hard on this design. I'm excited to do it because this is kind of a universal multi-tool holster. It uses snaps to clip on your belt, so you can take it on and off without putting your belt on, taking your belt off. You can move it between belts, or you know, all that good stuff. And it fits pretty much anything that's roughly like Leatherman Wave Wingman that size. It doesn't have to be just Leatherman. Um, and we have a pattern for it. So the pattern will be on the website, second link in the description. We are using, for leather, we're going to make this fully lined a little bit fancier than normal, just veg tan and utilitarian one. This is Buckle Guy's new in-house tannery, well not tannery, but they source this leather. It's made in America. This is called South Street. Um, I'm not quite sure what this particular color is, but it's very similar to like a Butero. And we're going to make this out of this leather because it is really, really nice. I've made a couple watch straps out of it, made a couple wallets out of it. And I really like it for a domestic, um, nice oily veg tan. Super nice. So this will be good to make it out of because we won't have to take much care of it. It has plenty of oil in it um, to last for a while before you have to do anything to it. So I'm going to show you how to put the pattern together real quick. It's a very simple pattern, but it doesn't fit on one piece. So there's, ignore this, this is because it's a sample. Um, there's a dotted line here and a notch here, and we're basically just going to tape that there, and we're cutting this all out as one piece. So excuse the noise. I'm just going to tape this here. And then I like to flip it over and do a piece of tape on the other side too, just to kind of lock it in. That's pretty much it. That's how we put the pattern together. Now this is actually a, a tool to line up your stitch lines, this piece. Uh, so we're not going to use that to cut anything out. We need one of these and two of these little wing guys, and then we're going to line this one. So I'm just going to trace this, cut it out. And then we're ready to start assembling pretty much right away. And I'm just going to punch out these corners so that we don't get any tearing. And then as usual, we're just going to pull all of our cut lines from these holes and we'll have nice rounded edges there. You can see kind of how buttery this hide is, the way it cuts. Super nice. Um, it's a very European style, I would say, for a veg tan. But it's it's impressive. It's I'm not I'm not trying to sell you anything here. You know, if you want to go grab a panel and try it out, but I think it's definitely it's a it's an interesting option for an American made hide because you don't see a lot of American tanneries making leather like this. So while I'm not you know, we we live in America and, and we use American made hides, but I'm not you know I'm, I like using whoever makes it best. We're in a global economy, there are a lot of there's a lot of generational talent in many countries making good leathers. This stuff is impressive for an American made hide because it's not a very American style. So they do sell it in panels, I think. Um, if you want to grab a little bit, it's pretty affordable and it's super nice. This curve is, I think, an inch and three quarters. So if you have an inch and three quarter belt ends punch, which we do not have, um, you can just cut that. You can use that instead of cutting this curve. But once we're done with these two, we are pretty much done. And then I'm gonna go find something kind of thin to line it with, I think. I'll go in the scrap bin and find something. All right, so I lied. I'm just gonna line it with the same stuff because this is their uh, three, four ounce. And the thing you have to remember about any leather is over time, leather's pretty much at its fluffiest when you get it. So it's gonna compress, right? So say you make a wallet out of three, four ounce leather and then you put it in your pocket and you sit on it for a while, it's, it's going to get thinner, uh, the wallet itself, right? So I think having roughly six to seven ounces of leather here is going to be fine for what will essentially become a utilitarian tool that we hang off of our belt. Um, so for that reason, and also I just want to see what this leather looks like when it's lined with itself, we're going to go with both of them. And it should be oiled and flexible enough where we don't have to glue it bent. We might have a few wrinkles, but we're going to try that out together. I'm not I'm not claiming to be fully experienced with this stuff yet because it just came out last week. But from the things I've made with it so far, I think we should be able to, to make that happen.
Before we put any do any assembling, I'm going to stitch the front and the back here. And I'm just going to go around, punch and stitch them. It'll just make it easier when we start folding things and stitching things together uh, to have this stuff already stitched. So now I'm going to dye the edges. This is a light round Phoebings, and if you've been, if you watch our videos, you know that I was a, I held out to not get the whole paint marker for dye thing, and then I got one, and I was like, oh my god, why haven't I done this for years? And now I'm in love with them. Um, but Bugger was sold out of them, so they had some made with like their own logo on them. And I'll tell you what, they're really really nice. They have replaceable tips, and they did this like cool raised sort of like '90s style puffy logo, <laughs> and it's just nice to touch. Like it feels good to hold. So, if you want them, they have them in stock now, because a bunch of people were commenting that they were out of stock while I was uh, waxing poetic about how cool they are. And that remains true, but you can get them anywhere. Um, but Buckle Guy had some nice ones made, so just throwing that out there. So, I'm going to basically dye and burnish all of these edges, like, enough, right? Then we're going to put the rest of this together, and then we can do a final burnish on everything we can touch but the stuff we can't touch will at least be burnished to the point where it's not going to stand out. You have to remember too, this isn't, you know, this isn't a super fine, you can make this in a super fine leather craft way, but we're kind of making it to hang off a belt and go to work every day, so as long as it's protected and solid, that's all I care about. I don't care if it's a mirror finish or anything like that. Okay, so this is, so I had to cut out all the snaps and reinstall them. Um, but take a good look at how to install the snaps will be in the pattern too. Um, you want to pick one side and you want to do the backs and the snaps all facing down. So on the big side you're going to put your male ends, on the small side you're going to put your caps and your female ends, and then on the flap you're also going to face your male end the same way down. I haven't put the snap on this side yet, that's going to be the only one that goes backwards, but the way this goes together is your belt goes in here. You snap it around it, that's how it's removable. And then we're going to sew in next our multi-tool holder. So this is going to be the flap, so you'll have easy access to it. So the next thing we need to do is sew in our little gussets. And we're going to do that. We're basically going to take this in the pattern. We're going to glue one here, and we're going to glue one here, and then we're going to stitch down here first. Now that we have this all sewn in, it's time to do the kind of tricky part. Now you can do this a bunch of ways. Included in the pattern is this piece here. This is a template for showing you where you want this piece to land, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to line this up to cut it out, line it up with the curve. There's two lines here. There's where the end of this leather is going to lay, and then there's where we would suggest putting the stitch line. Now that stitch line lines up with this edge, right? Here's how I do it. Now, Kaylina designed this pattern, right? So everyone's <laughs> going to do it different. She taped it. So she took these corners, she drew a line with an awl right here. She put tape in front of it. She folded it over. I think I put tape on the, the flaps. On this stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, so you use the awl to, and a ruler to make yeah. the line. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take our little pattern here. I'm going to take my stitching chisel. I'm going to hang one tooth over the end. I'm going to put, I'm going to punch some holes all the way through. Not all the way through, but it's just a piece of paper. <laughs> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer those holes onto our piece here. Make sure everything's lined up so we're not crooked. And I'm just gonna, and then I'm gonna make sure that I have one hole hanging over this side and this side, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pre-punch everything and not use anything sticky. So that's where those holes need to be. Now, as long as I, well, I'm make stitch line first. As long as I hang my teeth over in the same manner. Probably very dark. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. Um, we will have an even amount of, of stitch holes. 
and they're all going to be spaced, obviously, the same spacing because we're using the same stitching chisel. Then you don't even have to worry about doing anything with gluing. Now, if you want to glue, that's fine. I've just, to be honest, this is the first time I've ever fully made this pattern. Kaylina designed it um, for her brother over the course of a few weeks and really thought it out because they're really, it's, there's so many different multi-tools that it's nice to have something that kind of universally fits a bunch of them. So that's all. No glue. Oh, I have to punch this too, like all the way through. Make sure you only punch to there. So I'm just punching the holes that I marked out on the template. And now we're just going to sew this to this. And then I forgot to sew around the flap. So I'm just going to sew around the flap after that. We should be pretty much all done. So you can see here, no glue, nothing, just really simple. And I, of course, we don't use a stitching pony. If you do, this is going to be kind of weird to get it to hold in. But this might be one of the instances where you just kind of, you learn. We have a video on it on how to do this kind of uh, stitch, stitching pony free method. It does make things like this a lot easier um, because you're just holding it with your hands. So you don't have to take the time to kind of figure out how to get a good hold on it with a pony. I'm not saying ponies are bad. It's all just technique. But um, we tend to design for this stitching method in mind, as you can see by the stitch line we're doing currently. I've literally never used a stitch yeah. pony. I've used one three times maybe. So yeah, so this this seam is very simple if you pre-punch and just hold it while you're sewing it. And here we go. So this is the finished piece and I have the little marbled belt scrap from last week. This is an inch and a half belt. So the way this works is you just kind of, when you have your belt on, you just kind of slide this under, snap it, these are line 24 snaps. You're going to want to use something industrial, mill spec, whatever, um, or a different closure method. You don't want to use like glove snaps because this will fall off. But these guys, um, we made a molded tool belt for Kaylina's partner a year ago. He still uses it. Two, two line 24s is all you need for that. And you can see this will fill, fit an inch and a half, probably up to an inch and three quarters belt. So the way this works, all you do is you open it up, and we have a couple Leathermans here. So this is a rebar. This is a... Uh, wing, wing man, wing man, and you just slide it in. It's really not. Oh, this is upside down. Slide it in. Of course, this is brand new, so it'll break in over time. And you can place. There's plenty of room. So if you have a longer multi-tool, you can put this. You have. Um, it's going to be marked central, the snap location, but you can move it up and down to get a lot of play here, right? So it's about as universal as we could manage to make it. So that's how the wingman fits, and then the rebar slides in and fits perfectly as well. And, oh, the rebar, I put that in backwards. This has to go this way. <laughs> there we go. I don't carry a multi-tool myself, so this was Kaylina's pet project for a brother. Um, now, the one thing I will say, like I said, I never fully made this design before, and um, I did make the pattern a little bit incorrect. So Kaylina had it so that on her sample, this stitch line went all the way down and this seam wasn't directly on the fold. I just made it directly on the fold. So what I'm gonna do is, all I have to do is adjust this template and we'll be good to go. So you can do everything the same way. All you gotta do is follow this template. It just might look a little different when you download it and that is the reason why. It works like this, but we both like this a little bit better. And if you want, you can stitch all the way across like this, so that you add a little bit more strength, not that you would need it, but it looks nice too. Um, and if you're doing it on a sewing machine, you can sew the whole thing around. Um, so I'm going to adjust the pattern for that. That's the only difference, and we just didn't want to go back and remake the entire piece, because it's all the same. Um, so that's going to be it, actually. Really cool piece. Um, you, can put, you can put it on and off any belt. Fits a whole bunch of different size tools. We'll have the pattern at the second link in the description and the link to this really beautiful new leather honestly um this is the south street tannage by buckle guys new imprint newberry leathers in the first first link in the description so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one